I'm Andy Kerr and I'm uh, 48 and I'm a senior manager in the health service. I work in commissioning. They call commissioning the dark side because everybody hates us because if there's any cuts or rationing to do, it falls to us. But, uh, before that, I worked in uh, disability rights and mental health and supported mental health service users uh, to um, have their own say in services and how they're developed and, uh, and how to improve them from their point of view. So that's very much my perspective still. I've had periods of what you might describe as depression but, uh, and also periods of anxiety. And sometimes you're glad the depression comes because it's respite from the anxiety. But, uh, but probably on and off all, all my life. And I think probably when I look back, coming in sort of cycle, so you can see retrospectively how it's built up and how it's reached the point where you thought, oh shit, I'm gonna have to do something, uh, something about this. And then you do something about it and you're better for a while and then it kind of like builds up, builds up again. And recovering from that doesn't, I don't think of it in terms of recovering like you recover from the measles or from a cold or whatever. It's about retracing, well, what are the things that are fabulous about me? And, uh, and pushing your own fabulousness out there and not letting that be defined by other people's expectations of you. I drifted through college and did all right in the end, but uh, all the way that that was the thing that I was going to do and uh, you know, that your kind of life was geared up to going away to university and getting your degree and da 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 and never really paid a thought to what would happen after that. So when I reached the point of graduation, I was on the dole for a year. I was on employment training in this horrible little rooms above the shop on Church Street with loads of other sort of uh, social misfits, uh, learning to type and use computers, which were a bit of a novelty then, and just gradually went potty. I, I can remember a point thinking uh, that I might be invisible because it felt so long since anybody had touched me that I had no idea whether I was actually made of material stuff anymore and kind of lived through that and it wasn't until years later I told somebody about it and they're like oh my god you were really mad weren't you and I said oh yeah yes I suppose I was and I got uh, counselling from, uh, from an organisation called Compass who did a very good job on me and kind of put me straight for, a, for, another, for another wee while in one of those cycles that I mentioned and that was around about the same time as, uh, as coming out as a gay man and uh, I think coming out as having a mental illness is probably more difficult than coming out as a, as a gay, gay man because of, because of the discrimination that people face and the reaction that you get so unpredictable. Statistics say that you know one in four of us will experience mental ill health at some point or another, but that's probably more like everybody, I think. Stop about apologising for it, that you can only be right, you can only function, you can only offer to society if you're free from all of those so-called imperfections that people take their own lives because they've never been able to talk about what's going on for them. People were dying of meningitis in colleges at the same rate as people are taking their own lives. It'd be a national scandal and it's scandalous that that's not picked up.